different backgrounds and, and, and different language knowledge, and that's very obvious in in classes for heritage speakers. But I think across the board, you know, unless you are teaching one-on-one students who still, you know, you have some of them who, who already know something of the language at any level, and maybe the higher, the the the, the more um, more abrupt is this this difference. Our students are going to be different, and we want our students to be different. But we want to make sure that we are providing them with what they need to 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 know, and 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 with the with the level of encouragement they 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 need. So, for instance, instead of, instead of asking our students to do the same with this type of assignment, you can first decide, you know, depending on the level, what type of channel or or information source the students are going to be following. Some students with a more advanced level could follow maybe you know newspapers and are able to do so. Other students may have to follow Twitter. If <laughs> Twitter is sometimes more difficult to understand, but there are different sources. The, the thing is for them to get that um, that uh, ability to get out of there, to get sources of information in the authentic sources in the in the language, and to be able to process them and to come back with a report. So you can ask the students to subscribe to three, four, five feet, and to make a project based on, on what they see. They can follow a celebrity on Twitter. They can follow somebody who talks about the topics they are interested on. We have a lot of students who are not majors in Spanish, so then I always assign projects for them who are that are more related to their major, to their major you know, and psychology psychology or counseling, things like that. So and then all together they can begin to share that 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 type of, of of information and create a community of practice and see that everybody is doing what they can at the level they need. Another challenge that I I I, I and we always encounter is that the students need more time, not only of course to to talk, you know, but to write in the language. And right now, uh, with this um, with the social web, we, we are writing more than a few years ago. I mean, we write different things. We write in a different way. It's not the same thing to write for an update on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, to write a blog post, or to write on a wiki, or to write a Wikipedia entry. But the students are going to be using writing. I mean, for a long time, and writing combined with multimedia, of course, and with other sources. But writing is still important skill in our lives. So, the same, you know, what do we do with with our students? Then we ask them to to write for real audiences. That's the you know the thing we were talking about before with the Wikipedia exercise. But also to use what what is called the student vernacular environments, places where they are familiar, where they know the audience and the, the the style of communication, like Facebook. So if we ask them to write on Facebook, they know the rules. What they don't know is the language they have to use. So then is 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 they might be able to 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 apply what they know in the in the English language to the new language if they go to a group on 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 Facebook and see how people greet each other and then they come back to the classroom and say okay they were using this is that formal or informal and then I make them think okay what do you think is 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 it was a formal way to you know I mean uh, one one of the contributions to the to the to the group that was you know very polite or not and then they can imply they can get information from what they know in their own language and apply it to the to the foreign language so they can do many things you know i want to have a little bit of time for discussion so you can see on the slide different types of exercises the same with this other scenario where students can create their own materials at the same type of idea get the students out there have them subscribe to different things they are interested in and then you can control a little bit by having feeds coming to your to your computer, to your service, to your aggregator, and then have the students do something with that information they found on the internet. It can be just tag the information. There are many things they need to know how to, to, to do. So then that's that's one of the, the examples. And the same with um, 
with the specific learning uh, learning needs the same always know your audience know your students know what they want to do and then of course yesterday when I was um, <coughs> Um, to yeah yeah can I post it yes the, the, the slides I'm sorry Carl yeah, it's okay I, I put them online for for everybody so with the um, uh, yesterday I was asking about the day before I remember with gaming I'm not into video gaming that much I think I have enough things to do but you know I I can see the the, the excitement and how those tools can be used in in the classroom, but in my view, that's what I was asking uh, Julia because I don't Julie because I don't think I think that the the, the teacher has to be f not only familiar but excited about the and and, and about the the tool we uh, she or he is using. So the more you it's not like believe, but in the sense is that the more you believe in 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 what you are using, the more useful it's going to be for for your students. So I I know wikis are are wonderful. I know how to use them, and I I can transmit that 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 excitement and that uh, that inspiration to my students because I know I know how to write a blog post. I know what is that that is good for. I know how to to do a profile on the internet. What it means to say something. So, but with gaming, I wouldn't be able to do to to transmit that that excitement. So, I think we all have to be very sincere about how we are as teachers and then try to use the technology that, that better suits our our qualifications and our our strengths at, at, uh, as teachers, which is what we want our students to do as well. I mean, to use those technologies that help them, not use some technology only because we think it's good for 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 students or because it's trendy or whatever. So, and, and, and please, it's not that I'm, I'm not, I think gaming is fine, but because students are going to be confronted I mean, or, or exposed to so many teachers, you know, they, they will see different things and that's what I hope, you know, throughout their lives they're going to have teachers who are more excited about this type of tool, other teachers will be about another type of tools and then at the end they will have a more complete um, education that than, than maybe what we had before. Okay, the final remarks, I, I, there are two slides, I can leave them there for you to read. It's, it's, it's more about, as I said, there is a lot of information, our students can contribute to the information and we can take advantage of that situation. So, and then aggregators and other types of tools help us, you know, integrate what our students see and, and, and tag and do online and have everything on a centralized page, not only for us as teachers, but but particularly for them as a community of learners. I'm going to 